Morning everybody, it's a scorchingly hot day today. Um, I'm here to do some macro photography and I'm just going to head down into the valley to do it. This is also my badger site if you're wondering why I'm here with some clippers. I'm just clipping some of these long stems off. Um, as you'll probably know, badgers have always got the noses in the floor and getting a clear shot is really difficult. So I'm just clearing a small space here, but that's for another video. Today I'm going to do some macro photography. It's red hot. I want to get down and get some shade. So um, I'll see you shortly. I'm off down into the valley. Right, I literally think I've found the only bit of shade available at the minute. It's really a scorching hot day and it's still quite early. Um, what I'm going to do first off, when I did my last macro video, I was quite disappointed that I didn't get the chance to use this 90mm macro as much as I wanted to. Literally, I only took that last shot just as a comparison with the um, shots I'd taken with the reverse lens. And if you want to see that video, you know, I'll stick a link up there. So what I want to do today is start out just using this combination and just take some images with this. And then I'm going to try a couple of other things later on in the video um, to really give this a good testing out. So we'll see what we can do. I think some of the techniques I'm going to have to use today, I've also discussed on a previous video and, and I'll stick a link in the description below to that. But generally when it's hot like this and it's hot early on, even though if you get a cool start to a morning, a lot of the insects and things, you can, they're quite sluggish. But because it's so warm so early today, I think that's not going to be the case. They're all going to be really active. So there may be a case of seeing where the insects are going to and then setting up next to it and then just waiting for them to come back if you know they're going to come back to there. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we'll see what we can do and I'll take some images and uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. Right, the conditions are really quite difficult today. Um, what has happened is the sun's gone a little bit hazy, which is quite nice. So we're getting rid of some of those harsh shadows, but there's a fair breeze picked up at the minute. And uh, literally I've just been take, trying to take a picture of a, uh, a tiny spider on top of this sort of marsh grass. And it's been waving all over the place. And I don't usually use autofocus, but I've had to resort to autofocus on here just to try and get any sort of shot, shot whatsoever. So. Um, I don't know how that's come out, it's, as I say, it's really quite difficult just to try and, and get any shot at all, so um, surprised the autofocus works reasonably well. Um, as I say, for macro, normally I don't use it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to try one of these extension tubes. Now, I'm not going to put them all on, you come with a, like a stack that's about this wide, so I'm probably just going to put about half of them on, see if I can get that to work, and then see if I can get some even more macro, macro shots, if you like. That will then be fully... Um, manual so there'll be no electronic um, attachment for the lens to the camera. Now in my previous video I think I said if you're using a modern lens um, you may be able to or you will be able to use a modern lens but you're going to have to um, set your aperture beforehand, take the lens off, put the extension tube in and then that will be the aperture well unfortunately i don't think that works but however there is a workaround for it i think when you take your lens off it literally reverts back to either a closed fully closed or a fully open aperture it doesn't stop in that position if you've got a um, depth of field preview button on your camera i'm reliably informed that if you 
depress that when you've got your desired aperture keep that depressed and then take your lens off it will stay at that aperture now with these sony cameras they don't have a dedicated depth of field preview button so what i'm hoping i've done today is i've allocated a button to that so because these buttons are fully customizable on the back I've just changed C3 here to uh, depth of field preview. So I'm hoping if I depress that when I've got the desired aperture on the camera, I should be able to twist it off and it will stay, uh, take the lens off and it will stay at that aperture that I've chosen. So um, that's going to see, we'll see if that works. If not, um, obviously the um, extension tubes are going to be difficult to use with this lens, but we'll see how we go. Right, so it's, it's now time to see how we get on with these um, extension tubes. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to extend it out this far. So, uh, let's see, how do we work this? If we take that, unscrew one section off one side. And if we leave, if we take the big one off and then screw this back on. Let's try it at that, see what that does for us. Uh, now what I said I've got to do as well, so I've set this up at f8 I think, we'll have it at f8, uh, manual, now if I press this button and take the lens off, hopefully that looks like it has step stopped f8 which is good, uh, and then if I put that on there and then screw the that's it that's clicked into place make sure that's all tight uh, let's have a look see if this is focusing um, we want it at right let's try it on my bag That appears to be working. So, we'll give it a go and see what we can do. I might have to sl stay fairly close to the ground and say the wind's picked up, so it's quite difficult to get any shots on anything that's moving around. Um, I have managed it with autofocus, and obviously I'm not going to have that now, so I've got these two extension tubes on. It means I'm going to be focusing and getting a little bit close to whatever I'm trying to photograph, but I should be able to make it a little bit bigger. So we'll see how we go. Right, so I've had a try with this um, extension tube. There's nothing wrong with it, um, but I just feel like for, and this is where it's a bit odd because for a lot of people, it will be a useful way of getting that little bit closer. So if you've not got a dedicated macro lens, these are a great idea. If you've got a dedicated macro lens, then you could fall into two camps really. If you've got a dedicated macro lens, but a camera with um, a smaller sensor, so something like 16 megapixel or whatever or below, um, you may be grateful of being able to get that little bit of extra magnification uh, by getting that little bit closer to your subject. I'm just finding with this, because this is on a 42 megapixel censored camera, for me, I would really, most of the time, rather have that little bit of extra working distance, be able to use autofocus if I need it, because what I'm finding, again, with this lens, I'm doing a lot, is if I've got a subject that I know is particularly jumpy, is liable to fly off, what I'm tending to do is, is stick this in autofocus and, and move the camera and get a couple of what I always call banker shots. So they might not be perfect, they might be a little bit further than, away than I want. If I get those shots, 
then what I'm more likely to do is, is slip this into manual focus and then try and get that shot I really want. However, if the thing flies away, um, you know, I've still got some shots of it, some banker shots that I can work with. Obviously by using an extender, I'm on manual all the time, so it doesn't give me that option of autofocus. And I never really thought that I'd say that autofocus, I would use it that much for macro photography, but I'm just finding that that seems to be the way I'm using this lens at the minute. It's like, yeah, I know this is jumpy, potentially it's gonna fly away. It's on a nice um, stem or something with a lovely background. If I can get a banker shot and then I'm happy, I can then move on to the manual shot and try and get the ultimate shot that I'm after. Um, but that removes that if I'm, I'm using this extender ring. I've got to go in manually, I'm gonna be working closer. But certainly, yeah, if you've not got a macro lens, I think these are a great idea, along with reversing um, just a normal lens to get a macro capability as well. Two cracking ideas to get yourself some shots. Right, so I'm gonna have a few minutes with the 90 millimeter macro with this diffuser on and the flash and just see what I can get with that. How I've set up with that, I've set up um, on manual on the flash at 105 millimeters, which is as close as I can get to 90 millimeters on this flash. Um, I'm shooting at 1 16th power at the minute, uh, just to see how that works, but I can sh shove that up or down depending on what it looks like. And yeah, just take a few shots and, and see what we can do really. Right, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to call it a day for today, although it is, as I say, exceptionally hot, hot for me anyway. Um, it's been fantastic down here today. And as always with photography, I always find that I'm learning something new and I think for me, the big takeaway from today is that this is rapidly becoming my favorite setup. Um, just simply because when you get it right, and I mean when you get it right, when you get the flash output correct, which you do have to move around a little bit, and if you change locations, you know, it can be slightly different. But when you get it right, it has the ability to just produce images that you very rarely get to produce in any other way. The detail um, of the macro images when you shoot in with flash um, is not comparable really to anything else, I don't think anyway, not on a consistent basis. As I say, when you get this right, when you get the values right, the output of the flash is just phenomenal, the detail, and I hope you've seen that in the images. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna finish it here for this week. Hopefully you've seen a lot of macro photography over the last few weeks and if you want to have a go at macro photography it's given you some ideas to have a go to see whether you like it from really you know cheap methods of doing it up to obviously more expensive methods if you really get into it but um, I've certainly enjoyed it and uh, yeah it's something I'm going to be doing quite a lot of I think but anyway I'll see you next week for another video bye for now. <laughs>